Perhaps the most popular children's book ever written, Alice in Wonderland is present throughout every aspect of our lives, be it in art, entertainment, science, language, fashion or food. One of the most commonly known Wonderland conspiracies is the idea that all of Alice's experiences in Wonderland are related to various types of drug use. The idea became a visual reality during the 60s Summer of Love. Jefferson Airplane released White Rabbit in 1967, implanting an acid-less twist to the tale. The popular musicians of the era also drew inspiration from Carol's work. The Beatles frequently combined looking glass themes with psychedelia, as in I Am The Walrus and Lucy In The Sky With Diamonds, thus creating another connection between Alice in Wonderland and LSD. Some theorise it was Disney who began the drug analogy back in their 1951 classic. But let's just examine the general story. Alice is bored and sleepy, but her curiosity peaks after following a white rabbit. Some suggest this is a metaphor for snorting cocaine or other powdered narcotic as it wakes her up and transports her into unknown territory. Lewis Carroll was a paedophile. Lewis Carroll's relationships with children, particularly young girls, have been highly speculated upon over the years, despite the fact that there has never been any accusations of abuse. The direct opposite, in fact, his child friends spoke very highly of him and many remained friends with him throughout their adult lives. Numerous letters show playful correspondence, offering guidance and advice. So where did these rumours come from? As many of you already know, Lewis Carroll was actually called Charles Ludwig Dodgson. Carroll was the pen name he used when writing children's stories. However, this was never his major profession. Dodgson was a skilled maths professor at Christ Church College in Oxford University. This is where he first met a girl called Alice Liddell, the daughter of the head of the college, who lived there with her brother and two sisters. The whole family became close to Dodgson, particularly the three girls. And it is on one outing that he spent with the trio sailing along the Thames that the story of Alice and her adventures in Wonderland all began. He recited a story similar to the one we know and love today and, after much persuasion from Alice, wrote the story down and gave it to her as an early Christmas present in November of 1864 complete with 37 hand-drawn illustrations. By 1865, the story had almost doubled in length and went into print with artwork by John Tenniel, fast becoming a hit with young and old alike. Even Queen Victoria became a Wonderland fan. Contact between the Littles and Carol suddenly ceased in 1863, and some believe it was because Carol wanted to marry the then 11-year-old Alice. They also believe this is the reason why several volumes and pages of the diaries Carol kept are now missing. There is no evidence to support this claim, however, and as a dean of the college, Carol was not allowed to marry. Also, as dreadful as this sounds, it is important to note that during this period, the legal age of consent was just 12 years old. But if you ever see this photograph presented as proof of Carol's perversions, please be aware that it is most definitely a fake. As well as literary and mathematical skills, Carol was also a highly skilled photographer. He took photographs for over two decades and even had his own studio, attracting many prominent figures. But it would seem that he had a particular fondness for photographing and illustrating young girls. Not just the little children, but like the littles, they were always upper class. Sometimes the children stood or lay down provocatively in states of undress and some were even fully nude. This might sound shocking, but photographing nude children was an acceptable thing at the time. Some Victorian Christmas cards even depict naked children, as they were looked upon as pure, angelic, cherub-like creatures. As mentioned earlier, Carol supposedly first told the story whilst rowing down the Thames with the little girls, more specifically in a stretch of the river called Isis, named after the Egyptian goddess known for magical powers exceeding any other god. Isis has been worshipped throughout the ages by various religions and secret societies as 
well as being adopted into the belief systems of prominent figures in the esoteric community, such as occultist and ceremonial magician Alistair Crowley and Helena Blavatsky, the founder of Theosophy, an esoteric religious movement. Lewis Carroll was truly a man of both rhyme and reason. A lover of science, yes, but the realm of spirituality also interested him, as shown through his membership in the Society for Psychical Research, an organisation who try to understand psychic and paranormal events. During the first story, Alice follows a white rabbit into an underground world full of mysteries. Alice is derived from Greek and means truth. White rabbits are often associated with magic. Alice must change her perspective several times in order to overcome a series of challenges. This could be viewed as an initiation process in which she alters her state of consciousness by consuming mysterious liquid and food, allowing her to experience both the microcosm and the macrocosm. And she soon realizes that chaos and disorder reigns in every realm. As above, so below. A common goal within the occult world is to learn how to balance out opposing forces. The light and the dark, the masculine and the feminine, the positive and the negative, etc. Depicted here in the form of Baphomet, a deity incorporated into many mystic traditions. During the tea party scene, we find out that the Queen of Hearts accused the Hatter of killing time. And because time is a he and not an it, the Hatter and Time quarreled, and he's been stuck at six o'clock ever since. Tea time. I dare say you never even spoke to Time. Now, if you only kept on good terms with him, he'd do almost anything you like with the clock. We see similar ideas in Through the Looking Glass, particularly with the White Queen. One's memory works both ways. Mine only works one way. I can't remember things before they happen. Oh, it's a poor sort of memory that only works backwards. Published in 1871, six years after the original, Through the Looking Glass begins with Alice talking to a black kitten and a white kitten, and then venturing through a thin veil into a hidden reality. This is reminiscent of the High Priestess card in the tarot, who represents the divine feminine, intuition and sacred knowledge, and stands between a black pillar and a white pillar, representing duality. There is also a veil present, which represents the separation of the conscious and unconscious realms. The High Priestess is connected to the Goddess Isis, which is where it all began. It is interesting to note that the kittens are said to be the children of Dinah, Alice's beloved cat, which is very similar to Bina, the third sephirah on the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. It means understanding and is part of conscious intellect relating to the priestess in the occult tarot, who is usually depicted wearing blue. Bina is likened to a palace of mirrors and Alistair Crowley's Liber 777 associates Bina with Isis. In Alice's case, the forces she must balance are the red and white queen. She does this by becoming a queen herself. The crown, or ketha, is the highest level on the tree of life, said to be the most hidden of all things. Famous faces are rumored to be the abused, as well as the abusers under Alice in Wonderland programming. And people point to evidence in music videos, movies, social media accounts, and glitches caught on camera we see many suspects pictured with or dressed as the White Rabbit. As mentioned earlier, White Rabbits are associated with magic, but we move the top hat and the White Rabbit becomes symbolic of scientific experimentation. Kathy O'Brien, along with supposed ex-CIA agent Mark Phillips, make reference to this all in their book Transformation of America, in which Kathy speaks of her alleged CIA trauma-based mind control and the abuse she suffered at the hands of many high-profile figures such as George Bush and Hillary Clinton. 